So the real question is, what are you afraid of? And I managed to find this cartoon of a guy who is concerned about just about everything. He's concerned about his good friend underwater. Uh, more realistically, you might be concerned about this happening. Um, fortunately, this isn't that regular an occurrence. Some people are concerned about this. This is a very rare occurrence. We've had it that close, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, humpback whales are immense. They are just immense. And when they come up close to the boat and the tail flukes are as wide as your boat is long, that's really something. Um, in preparing for this presentation, I got a, uh, some statistical information. The U.S. Coast Guard compiles accident, accident statistics, and I, we're going to be relying quite a bit on the 2013 accident statistics, which was the most recent available at the time I prepared this. Uh, Boat U.S. Insurance provides a bunch of statistics on what their claims are. The Insurance Information Institute uh, provides interesting information. These are all very valuable, but we have to understand there's some shortcomings in, the, in, in that information in that it's primarily U.S. based. And because it's U.S. based, it's a little short on blue water information. And, and so, and it, there are a lot of motorboats in the statistics as well. And sometimes motorboaters and sailboaters have a little different, different sets of risks. And so I want to bring to it, and you should also bring to it, what, well, what was your experience? And what have you heard of? What have people you know and experience? And so we'll look at these statistics, and then we'll take some of them a little further with our own experience. Sailing is actually a pretty safe activity. Now, just starting at the top, the odds of dying this year in the US, one in 137, all causes. There are fewer than 137 of us in the room, so we've all got a pretty good shot this year. <laughs> Better than that, odds of dying in the, in, of an injury. So if you don't currently have a terminal disease, your odds of dying of an injury in the U.S. one in 1,640. So you got better than a 99.9% shot at making it through the year, no matter what you choose to do. In a boating accident, the odds of dying are one in half a million. So it's not a very likely event. There were only 609 deaths, according to the Coast Guard, in the year in question. Actually, a, this is all boats, including the crazy guys on their little motorboats. A um, bit safer than swimming pools that account for 652 deaths. Sailing doesn't even make the list. When you actually burrow into the raw data, there were 17 deaths associated with sailing. And when you burrow even further, of those 17, three quarters of them were not sailing at the time. So it actually being killed while sailing, maybe four or five in the entire US, this is a pretty safe activity. You compare that with scuba diving, 90 deaths. And you gotta keep in mind that you do, per hour, you do a lot less scuba diving than you would do sailing. S sorry? Okay. So, um, think about this as you are going to sail to the South Pacific and do a lot of scuba diving, that the sailing may be a lot safer than the diving you're going to do at the other end. Now talking quickly about the psychology of risk, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't really know anything about this, but we can all pretty, agree, pretty well agree, we all accept some degree of risk. All of you have made it this far, so you've already made it over the greatest hurdle, which is leaving the dock in the first place, and you have come to terms with a lot of the risks, but now you're going to talk about making a passage at 3,000 miles, depending on your boat speed, is going to take you two to four weeks. Some additional risks will happen, and addressing the risks is simply is better. Thinking about it and saying, I accept that risk, or I'm going to do something about this other risk, is better than simply saying the risk doesn't exist. 
the risks you accept may or may not be based on their statistical likelihood. And this is perfectly reasonable. It's, we don't expect people to be rational in what they're afraid of. Some people are afraid of heights, some people are afraid of, of airplanes, and some people are desperately afraid of being out of the sight of land. People are afraid of different things. And different people have different tolerances for different risks. It's up to the captain to figure out what it is that they and their crew are willing to accept and make the appropriate approach to addressing the concerns. And I'd like to say in the last place, if you're going to head out from here to Tahiti, and you got all of this confidence and you're not concerned with anything, you probably haven't thought it through. There are some things that you really need to be prepared for and be take care of before you go. So talking about the risks and remedies, the first thing you need to think about is to understand what the risks are, and then we're going to talk about avoiding things as opposed to coping with things after they've happened. The two are, are a little bit different, and you can prepare for the dangers that are un, unavoidable. Blue water sailing is a little more risky than staying home, but think about keeping your objective to make your trip as safe as comfortable as possible. Think of any risk, fire, hurricane, this or that. Risks can be categorized two different ways. The first is based on their likelihood, and the second is based on the severity. So likelihood, you can have things that are very unlikely, very likely, never going to happen, always going to happen. And severity runs all the, the gamut from being inconvenient to damage, to injury, to loss of boat, to a fatality, which would be very inconvenient at the very least. So we can come up with a little chart here where you can place the relative risks and then think about which are the ones that you want to take care of. So across right to left is how likely is an event running from ne never to a sure thing and bottom to top inconvenient to fatality. And here I'll give you a few uh, examples of things you might address. Down in the lower right, something that is definitely going to happen. It's only an inconvenience. Flying fish are going to land on your boat. How many of you had flying fish already landing on your boat? Okay. Yeah, we got a pretty good majority here. How many of you were at Mike Daniels' presentation uh, on Monday? Um, every morning you can get up and get the stinky flying fish off your deck and this is the opportunity for you to do your rig inspection. It's a feature. It helps you remember to do your rig inspection every morning when you walk around to get the flying fish off your boat. Well, something that is not going to happen but would only be inconvenient if it did. Suppose all the clocks stopped on your boat. Well, I can't imagine a scenario when this is likely to happen. So I'm not concerned about it. Well, now we get to the other two corners that might result in fatalities. Well, it's unlikely that you're going to run out of food, but if you did, it would be really inconvenient. Running out of water is actually a lot more likely because your water system breaks down. Your tank cracks, all of the water runs into the bilge, the bilge pump dutifully pumps it overboard, and then where are you? And there were people on our world trip. Yes, this is an experience. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got to uh, an island next to uh, Hiva Oa, boat comes by, we share 80 gallons of fresh water with him so that he can proceed having put some tape over the side of his tank. But then in the upper right, the sure thing fatality, if we cruise long enough, and maybe we should be so lucky, we could all die on board. So what does that mean you want to do? Well, we by doing prevention, we make things less likely. But an important feature, we talk about the odds of this happening, the odds of that happening. Even if you have something that's a one in a million shot, it doesn't make any difference once it's happened. Do you say that having a fire is very unlikely, being struck by lightning is very unlikely? Once it's happened, the odds were 100%. And so at that point, what you want to do is to try and minimize the severity of the result. And so we're going to address this and 
talking about a number of different activities and place them on this chart. We'll talk a little bit about fire because on board we all have fire prevention systems to some extent or other. We'll have fume detectors. There, you all we have all of these safety features on uh, our stoves and. Um, and then for control systems, we have fire blankets and fire extinguishers and training. And I want to circle back to that just a little bit at, when I get to the bottom here. Of 4,000 accidents reported by the Coast Guard, 210 fires, resulting in 107 injuries but no deaths. But um, $10 million in damage. 65% of these fires are fuel. Now, we like to say, well, we all have diesel engines on board and the diesel doesn't burn, but we often carry a can of gasoline to run the dinghy or what have you, and that's perfectly capable of causing considerable damage. Additionally, it, under the proper circumstances, and we may get into that if we have time, uh, diesel's perfectly capable of, of uh, causing a great fire. Interestingly enough, propane is not a significant cause of fire. We have so many wonderful safety features built into our stove that automatically shuts off if the flame goes out and our tank's stored outside, so if there's a leak, it goes not into the boat but overboard and things like that. Propane fires uh, are extremely rare and only occur on boats that are not occupied because the stuff has got this uh, wonderful aroma that lets you go and fix it in the event there's a problem. Um, significant cause of fire is electrical. And electrical fires happen for two reasons. First, the wire gets old and brittle, the insulation gets brittle, and then the, you've got exposed wire that shorts out against something else can cause a tremendous amount of heat in a very short area, very small area. And the second is wire corrosion. As the wire corrodes, the area of the conductor gets smaller. Uh, once again, you put a lot of current through a wire that maybe runs your windlass, it overheats and you can cause a fire. We've had three small fires aboard, one in the galley that doesn't really count. We had a uh, autopilot motor catch fire. Kathy comes up, you smell smoke? No, I don't smell smoke. No, I smell smoke. Come down, come down below, smell this smoke. I go down into the cabin, aft cabin, and you can smell the smoke, and I open up under the rear bunk, and there's a pretty good little fire going, and it burned out on its own, wasn't a problem for us because not because we were smart, but because we were lucky, and because we were on board and we were prepared. If, if it had gotten if it had looked like it was getting bigger, we could have put a fire extinguisher on it, but it wasn't necessary. Um, we had another little instrument fire where um, a ground wire to an instrument broke. Uh, the insulation broke and came up against a hot terminal. Uh, these didn't cause more dangerous fires. They could have easily been, been a rag sitting on that wire and it would have been a dangerous problem that uh, we didn't encounter. Uh, back at training, something interesting I saw on uh, in uh, one of the safety books that we've been working through is that um, you have a lot of fire extinguishers on board. Typically, the fire extinguisher we carry is not large enough to put out a fire. So the first step in fighting a fire is to collect all of the people in one place so you know where they are and they aren't causing trouble. And you collect all the fire extinguishers so that you can put fire extinguishers onto a fire one after the other rather than waiting for the fire to flare back up while you go hunting for the next fire extinguisher. So getting back to the graph, yeah, we'll put fire somewhere like this. It's not that likely, but I've had a couple of fires, so it's a lot more likely than all of the stuff I haven't had. Uh, seldom causes fatality. Uh, because if you're there, you get out of the way, and if you're not there, you, you're safe. 